Thing. So this is this uh, eight-year-old cat with um, some weight loss and GI signs. And so on the still images, we see this portion of intestine. This is the most exaggerated uh, portion of intestine with the infiltrated pattern. You see this muscularis. This is serosa, and the muscularis is significantly thickened. And this is submucosa and then mucosa. And then the lumen is buried in the middle here. And so we have a complete inversion of the mucosal muscularis ratio, uh, which should be about 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 in favor of the of the mucosa and it's about four to one in favor of the muscularis so when you see this this is often associated with lymphoma and you can uh, do aspirates into the hypocote portion at this angle so this is the area that i would target you could even core biopsy this um, with a probably a 0.1 or a, a one centimeter cut into this area just make one hole from this direction into this area and don't go through the other side but um, that would be one option in this case to get to the diagnosis. The bladder looks pretty good. You see this portion of intestine where you have the muscularis that progressively flares up and becomes thicker as it goes along. And you have a little bit of loss of detail here. It's a still image, so I can't tell definitively, but um, the submucosal layer starts to lose its detail, whereas it's nice and solid here. And this portion of thickened intestine, you have this muscularis that's inverted on the ratio and it's a, it has an obstructive pattern so you have dysfunctional bowel here that needs to be likely cut out it may regain function if it's chemo responsive let's say this is a small cell lymphoma predlucaran may work as well as anything to reduce this down and then this portion of whether it's a hairball or chyme or even a foreign body um, may move on through after this is chemo reduced but depends on how the animal's doing clinically if showing any signs of obstruction then um, uh, direct resection and anastomosis is the way to go, but it won't clear out the whole pathology because this, you'll see here in a minute that this is a multicentric intestinal infiltrative pattern. And this is a less dramatic portion of bowel that's thickened with the inversion of the muscularis to mucosa ratio of a 3 to 1 here. And this is a nice measurement. The wall thickness, uh, this is excessive obviously 0.61. Uh, up to 0.3 roughly, depending on the um, publication as the normal wall thickness for a cat from cirrhosis to mucosal interface. But it's more important the ratio, muscularis to mucosa, than actually the thickness. So that's what we want to pay attention to. Um, in the liver of these older cats, they get these hyperechoic lipogranulomas are typically what's going on here, but you can put an aspirate needle into that easy enough to make sure that's all it is. Typically, hyperechoic things are, are less dramatic than hypoechoic nodules in general, but that's not always the case. Sometimes carcinoma mets can be hyperechoic or isoechoic as well. Um, this is the ileum. Now, ileum tends to, right the ileocecal valve, tends to hypertrophy as muscularis normally. It's where you almost get a one-to-one -one ratio between the muscularis and mucosa as it approaches the ileocecal valve. So I don't get too crazy about inversion of ratios down here, but if it's in the jejunum or proximal duodenum or proximal ileum or in the upper duodenum, I do get more concerned about inversion of muscularis mucosal thicknesses. Looking at this liver, this is a typical older cat liver probably underwent some chronic inflammatory disease. You see this patchy hyperechoic variation in the parenchyma and the increased portal markings here. They're kind of thickened, a little bit irregular. Um, that's typical fibrosing liver, which may be active, may be quiescent. Uh, gastric wall looks pretty good. Um, nice lumen here, no loss of detail, submucosa, mucosal or rugae, and the serosa and the muscularis, you see the muscularis is normal here. So you have almost, you have a four to one mucosal to muscularis ratio, which is normal in the stomach. So it's a sectorial disease. Nice view of the pancreas here. This is a pancreatic duct, capsule, capsule, kind of heterogeneous, but pretty much normal for an older cat. So as we go into the video, Bladder looks pretty good, nice and curvilinear. Um, again, the gastric wall looks pretty good, nice and uniform. Can follow the curvilinear patterns okay without a problem. Nice ileocecal 
junction here, nice curvilinear patterns in this portion of the small intestine. So we know that the ileocecal is clean, which is key from a surgical standpoint. Uh, liver looks good. Maybe a little bit of hypertrophy in the muscularis of the pylorus here, but not a big deal. Um, gallbladder, nice and curvilinear, and you can see the minor variation in the hepatic parenchyma. Not a clinical player, though, in this cat. Now, this upper duodenum, the pylorus, I'm not sure on your angle here, but this portion of intestine is uh, it's starting to lose detail. It's a little bit thick, and if you look closely, there's a little bit of a hyperechoic inflammatory pattern around it, a little bit of fuzzy fat, so you know you have transmural disease going on there. And this is the bulk of the intestine that is excessively thickened. You can see this muscularis inversion, muscularis mucosal ratio. So interoperative ultrasound is optimal in these cases to where you can dial in on the most dramatic pathology and take pieces there or resect it out by delineating you know, how far the infiltrated pattern is going. But this is so diffuse that you're not going to be able to cut it all out. It's more to get the most dramatic lesion like this. And this portion probably has to be cut out because you can see it's obstructive. You've got some, maybe a hairball moving through here or something like that that's, that's stuck. You have empty lumen preceded by this dilation of chyme or hair or whatever this progressively shadowing material is. And it's all squeezed down by this hypertrophied muscularis. That's pretty much it. So that's what I would do with this feline lymphoma until intestinal lymphoma with an obstructive pattern, maybe complicated inflammatory bowel, FIP is a distant third, um, and, uh, but bottom line is need some samples. So you can either go at this portion of intestine from an aspirate or core biopsy standpoint, but likely this will need to be cut out. Uh, but it, you're, the surgeon needs to know that you're not putting back together healthy bowel, so a mentopexy would be essential in that case. Um, or you could try to get your aspirates and then chemo reduce it, maybe do some GI lubricants on him and see if this will move through. Because it really has a hair density. It's progressively shadowing here little by little. So And, and chronic GI cats get hairballs all the time. So that's probably what's going on. So really interesting case.